Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fanfiction and audio fiction. This is a special one-shot lyrical written by Sheikha, narrated by Dawn and myself. Hello! And it is for day nine of Lady Noir July, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, massive shout out to Sheikha for writing it. Go and send her some love. Also, massive shout out to LB Arts for her beautiful, stunning artwork in the thumbnail. All her information is linked down below. Make sure you go and send her some love. And make sure you send me some love by smashing that like button. It really does help to support the channel. Make sure you comment down below what you think of it. And make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on other Lady Noir one shots that are happening, other series that are happening, and other amazing other one shots to come. And I hope you enjoy. Day nine, together. Someone you loved. The pressure had been building in his chest for weeks. Adrian might have been 18 years old, but not much had changed about him other than his height. He was still an overscheduled model, but now he had even more to juggle, as he was a legal adult. He was finishing up school, but his father was debating whether he should go to university or go straight into the family business full time, without even asking what his son wanted. Shadow Moth had grown more complacent about Akumas in the last few years, but the ones he did summon were the ones that did the colossal damage to the city and its people. His friends were all planning for university and careers while he was stuck at home, waiting on his father to decide his future. Each individual problem would have been enough to deal with by itself, but all of them together left him feeling crushed. The final blow was Marinette. Beautiful, sweet, amazing Marinette had been accepted into fashion school on a great scholarship. She had been talking about it animately at school with him, Nino and Alia only yesterday and the excitement practically raided off her like sunbeams. He was happy for her, of course, but hearing that she too would be leaving him behind was like a knife to his heart. For he loved Marinette. He had loved her for years, but had never been able to tell her because of a certain young woman in red and black. He had been hung up on Ladybug for so long that he was afraid to hurt Marinette by offering her a divided heart. Now, seeing her preparing to leave him, it broke his heart. The anger, hopelessness and depression started filling him more often than not and it was an ongoing battle to fight it off to keep the Akumas at bay. Hey, Adrian, Plag said after his most recent inner battle against the darkness. You really need to talk to someone about all this. I wish I could help you more, kitten, but there is only so much I can do. You need to talk to Bug. She will help. I know she will. But she doesn't want to know who I am, Plag, he whispered, his throat sore from crying. Then fudge a few details. For lack of anything else, you need to get some of this off your chest to something other than me. Someone human who has a chance of understanding your problems. The bug can keep you safe from Akumas while you get it off your system. Yeah, I guess you're right, he mumbled. Then call her. Now? Now! But it's after midnight, Plag. And you're her partner. You're having an emotional crisis and need her help. Too tired to argue with the Kwame anymore, he transformed and left a message on her bug phone. Hey bug, I know it's late, but could you meet me at the tower as soon as you get this? I, I need your help. Two hours later, he sat on the Eiffel Tower as the golden lights bathed the city he protected in a warm glow. Hello kitty, came a soft voice. He'd been out of it and not heard her land. Hey, 
You sounded awful in your message. Are you okay? No, little bug. I'm not. She settled next to him, watching their feet dangling hundreds of feet over the golden city lights, as if they were nothing more than reflections of stars in a pond. Finally, Cat broke the silence. I know I shouldn't be saying this, but I have to tell someone. I get it, she replied. I really do, and I'm here for you, Kitty. I'm going under, LB. It's just too much, and this time I fear there's no one to save me. She placed a hand over his with a gentle squeeze. We're friends and partners, Cat. I'll always be here for you. But that's part of the problem. Oh, it hurt to watch a retreat like that, as if he had struck her hand away. This all or nothing heart of mine really got a way of driving me crazy. On this side of the mask, I'm fine. Cat Noir, saver of Paris, and all round hero. His only problem are beating the Akumas and not getting the girl. But on the other side of the mask, everything's falling apart. My family's a mess. My friends are all getting ready to leave for university. And I can't even ask out the girl of my dreams because I'm still hung up on you. And I won't hurt her that way. So I'm left alone and I'm so... So tired of being alone. He ground his fist into the iron girder of the monument, breathing deeply to help control the anger and the anxiety that had been threatening him for far too long. I'm sorry, Kitty. I never meant to hurt you. He glanced up at a hesitant whisper and saw tears glittering like liquid gold on her mask. It's not your fault, LB. You can't help how you feel, but neither can I. I just need somebody to help me heal. Somebody to know the real me. The hero and the mess. Someone to have me, as I am and with no expectations. Someone to hold onto who loves me too. She just stared at him, her hands coming up to her mouth as the tears fell. I know it's easy to say, and I don't expect you to believe me, she said thickly, but I do love you, Kitty. But it's never the same kind of love, is it? He sighed in resignation, wiping away her tears with a gentle finger. Oh, loving you is so easy, LB. I guess I kind of like the way you numb all the pain, you know. But now... The day bleeds into nightfall, with nothing to make me feel alive except when I'm with you, and you're not here to get me through it all. So I try to let my guard down, to let someone else into my heart, and then you pull the rug and I always fall back into love with you. She wrapped her arms around him, clinging to him as the tears swept over her. I'm sorry, little bug, he murmured, rubbing her back in comforting circles. I didn't mean to hurt you. I just needed to get it out before it turned toxic. You can keep me safe, and I... I was getting used to being someone you loved, she sobbed. What? She sniffled and pressed her cheek against his hair. I'm so ashamed, cat. I've been going under for far too long, and this time there's no one for me to turn to either. You see, this all or nothing way of loving. I have it too, and it got me not sleeping. I can't sleep without seeing you to make sure you're okay. And when I can't find you, I don't sleep at all. And even though I thought... If I could just confess to the boy I've been in love with all this time, then I would have someone to support me and let me be weak when I couldn't be strong anymore. But he has grown more distant and now I needed someone to know me for me too. 
somebody to help me heal my heart. Someone to have my back outside of the mask. Just somebody to know how it feels. And yeah, it's easy to just say I love you, cause I do. But it's never the same and it's complicated. She leaned back and wiped her downcast eyes. Despite his aching heart, Cat couldn't bear to see her hurting. He nudged her shoulders. Does it mean that you have a new prescription, my lady? Are you seeing this alley cat in a little differently? Her sniffling turned into a snort of laughter. Silly kitty, she murmured, keeping her eyes on the lights beneath them. I guess I kind of like the way you helped me escape, or at least the idea of him. They sat silent for a long time before she said, If I've made you feel like this, cat, I'm very sorry. He pulled her into a sideways hug. I forgive you, Bug. That's what love's about, after all, isn't it? But I'm lonely too, you know. You've always been my comfort and my courage, and I feel like I've failed you, and now? How did you phrase it? The day bleeds into nightfall? Everything just bleeds together, and you're not there to get me through it all. Tonight, I was ready to let my guard down. Ready to ask you to forgive my blindness and see if you would accept me as flawed as I am. And then you pulled the rug. He stared at her, eyes wide. Really? You were? Yeah. She leaned her head against his shoulder. Like I said, I was getting kind of used to being someone you loved. It always made me feel strong and safe. Wow, he whispered, running his hand through his hair at the back of his neck. That's just... Wow. She chuckled weakly. Yeah, silly, isn't it? I think a part of me has loved you for a while, but it was frightening and complicated and I had to rewrite time and... Whoa, slow down, Bugaboo. What do you mean you had to rewrite time? She shook her head venomously. It doesn't matter now. We've passed that temple milestone, but that has been what's been holding me back for so long. I couldn't risk leaving you alone, but it left me cut off too. Wait. Is that why you pushed me away? You were afraid of messing up time? She nodded. Looking up at him through, she nodded, looking up at him through tear dewed lashes. And I tend to close my eyes when it hurts sometimes. That's when I would fall into your arms, knowing I'll be safe in, knowing I'll be safe in your sound until you come back round to myself, just like you did earlier. So you're not alone, cat. I've been there with you all along, even if I could never bring myself to say it before. His heart clenched tight at the sorrow in her voice and the slump in her shoulders. If you don't love me anymore, I understand, she whispered, unable to meet his eyes any longer. I know I don't deserve it. Could he give her one more chance after she had broken his heart again? What about his other love, Marinette, who was the only person who had ever fought for him with his father, who had given herself so many times to make sure he was happy? The only person he knew had loved him for a long time. I... I just don't know, LB. I think I might need time. Time to sort out how I feel. I may have loved you for years, but I've also had feelings for someone else, and I need to get my head on straight before I can commit to anything. Is... is that okay with you? She sniffed and nodded. 
I get it, Kat. I really do. Can I just ask one thing? Sure. What's her name? For a moment, his heart raced, wondering why she would be asking, but then the momentary panic left him. This was Ladybug, his partner. She wasn't going to do anything crazy. She wasn't some obsessed fan who would go after his love interest. She was his partner. She was his friend. It's Marinette. Multimouse? Remember? She stared at him wide eyed. M Marinette! Her voice was suddenly high and slightly strangled. Why her? He frowned. Because she is thoughtful, caring, and kind. She was always helping others, including me on both sides of my mask. She blushed and rubbed the back of his neck in embarrassment. And, and she's loved me for a while now. For some reason, her face turned as red as a mask. What? I mean, how do you know that? I didn't see it for the longest time, but one day, the pieces started to fall into place. Once I knew, Marina just grew until she filled all the cracks, if that makes sense. She nodded, her eyes still wide and staring. She n n knows you. Both sides of you? Well. She doesn't know I'm Cat, but yeah, if I hadn't been so hung up on you all these years, then I would have been the luckiest guy in the world to have someone like Marinette love me. Ladybug leaned forward and grabbed his face in her hands. LB, what are you doing? He asked through squished lips. She tilted her head to one side and leaned in close, examining his eyes and hair and jaw. Finally, she breathed. Adrian? Cat gasped. His name on her lips was like a caress and it sent a shiver through him, though not of fear. Her tone was so laced with awe there was nothing for him to be afraid of. Her bluebell eyes were round and full of emotions behind her mask. What? How did you... His voice was lost as she whispered the two words he never thought to hear her say. Spots off. A swirl of pink light washed over her, leaving behind... Marinette? Princess? He whispered, afraid anything louder would cause his beautiful, bizarre dream to shatter. Is it really you? She blushed darkly in the city of lights, but her eyes were shining. I was here all the time, Kitty. Asian. You were there all along, weren't you? You were always there to get me through it all. Who else would I have let my guard down around? Who else could have pulled the rug out from under me so thoroughly that I couldn't think of anyone else except you? Wait, 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 wait. We fell in love with each other twice? How is that even possible? She wriggled and his heart leapt in response to the sound. You told me you were irresistible under your mask, remember? He couldn't resist preening a little, but then his eyes blew wide. Wait a second. Is that why you could talk to Kat just fine but stammered around Adrian? She blushed and nodded. Ridiculous, right? He blinked at her and then laughed loud and long. Chloe level ridiculous. Laughter rang out over the city as he sparkled as the lights that illuminated it. So that means you really do love me? All of me? He asked when the laughter died away, his heart pounding madly in his throat. What do you think? 
Her lips twitched in a smirk that made his swallow hard. Well, you did go out with Luca. Only after you asked me to help you date Kagami. His heart sank at the memory of that conversation. Oh, I'm so sorry, Marinette. I wish I had figured things out sooner. You've had me so torn both sides of you for years, and I never seem to know where I stand with you. Shyly, she released him, fiddling with her fingers in her lap. You can stand beside me. Because that is where I'll always need you. That is, if we're going to be okay, if you still want to be with me? He cupped her face and pulled her close. You mean I don't have to choose between my princess and my lady? Nope. Then... May I kiss you, Marinette? She practically fell into his lap, her arms around his neck as her lips gave him an answer that made his heart sing. He held her tightly against him, letting his fingers tangle in her hair as he deepened the kiss. All the confusion, the heartache, the jumble of pieces settling neatly into place into his heart, and it spelled out her name to the rhythm of his blood. After a second or an eternity, he wasn't sure which, they parted, breathless and blushing completely, unsure of what to do next. Then Marinette shuffled closer, shivering. Are you cold? he asked, wrapping one arm around her and marvelling at how well she fitted against him. The knowledge filled him with such a warm ache that he cuddled her close as he purred. A little, but I just want to be close to you. She looked up at him sideways through her lashes and her eyes smiled brightly in the golden glow. I love you, Kitty. Adrian. He pressed a kiss to her hair as the stars traced their ancient orbit above their heads. I think I could get used to being someone you loved, my lady, my princess, my marinette. Thank you for listening to this beautiful emotional wine shot um, written by Shiga. Make sure you go and send her some love. All her information is down below. Send me some love by smashing that like button. It really does help with the channel. Comment down below what you think of it. If you don't know what to say, put someone you loved. And make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on some other emotional and beautiful um, one shots coming your way, series that are happening at the moment and future projects I am working on and I hope you are good and I will speak to you soon. Bye!